serious lawyers. What's a case you regretted winning? I'm a work comp attorney. Now represent injured people, but used to work on other side insurance defense. There was an applicant with a serious injury. Fell off a ladder, busted back with fusion, shoulder duct, years of treatment, internal issues, psych issues, really just ducked up. 50% plus permanent disability. We were 5 years in and finally getting to settlement time. If we bought out his future medical, settlement pretty far into 6 figures. This guy was the sole provider for wife and 2 kids. Then we found out he had a regressive brain cancer. Expected only couple years to live, at best. Thus, we wouldn't buy out future medical anymore. Still got permanent disability for dollar sign 60 k ish but can't give medical buy out, based on 25 plus year life expectancy anymore. I felt terrible for the guy and his family. Me and the adjuster tried to get insurance, to agree to some sort of amount like 5 year buy out, but the bean counters said hell no. The attorney knew it wasn't me making the decision. Even though he worked on that guy's file for 5 plus years he decided to take 0 dollars in fees. I have so much respect for. That attorney turning down dollar sign 10k plus in fees to help his client in a very shitty situation. I do family law and I represented a father who had lost most of his custody from heroin use and imprisonment as a result. He came to me saying he was clean and doing good and had his life together and it checked out. He had been clean for almost 9 months not counting jail time and seemed sincere in wanting to resume a full relationship with his son. The other side fought viciously to keep him at extremely little custody and supervised at that, but we prevailed and got an order restoring fairly frequent unsupervised partial custody. Not long afterwards, only about 3 months after the case, he was back doing heroin, sold most of his furniture, and for me the most soul crushing is that he set up a fake GoFundMe stuff for his child's cancer, his child didn't have cancer and has never had cancer. So you know where that money was going. I withdrew my appearance at this point, so I don't know what happened afterwards, but I imagine and hope his custody was taken away. Basically the net result of winning that case was that the poor boy had to witness his father relapse on heroin and was exploited for money. Worst case I ever won. I work in medical malpractice defense. Once I had a obstetrician gynecologist who burned a patient during a procedure. When I met with the doctor, he lied to me throughout the representation over 16 months saying he had no idea how it happened. There is a doctrine in law, called res ipsa meaning absent some sort of negligence. This accident could not have occurred. Woman came in without a burn, and after the procedure, the woman left with a burn. There's no way this doctor didn't know what had happened. The area of the burn was where he was operating on. It wasn't until I brought up settlement, because this was not a case we could win did he say, oh maybe I do know what happened. We ultimately settled that case, which is considered a favorable outcome considering the potential high monetary verdict. Sometimes I think this doctor really ought to have lost that case and their license. Guy lost his wife and children in a car accident. He wanted to exercise to get his emotions and mental health back in check. Doctor wrote him recommendations for exercise equipment, ball, chin up bar, nothing crazy, and he submitted the expenses for same to his insurer. Client, insurer adjuster, wanted this for tooth and nail, because exercise equipment was only covered for physical rehab, and he was not physically injured. I do not practice in this area anymore. I wouldn't say I regret this so much as to this day it amazes me. As a first year associate I was given a terrible pie case where my client received a flu shot and thereafter felt pain in his shoulder. He went to another doctor who performed an MRI and determined he had a torn rotator cuff, which was undoubtedly not related. My job was to allege the flu shot caused the rotator cuff tear. Our ortho actually correlated the two, which is the more regrettable position, and the case paid out. Being the bottom of the totem pole I had no choice but to take the case, which was handed down by a partner. But at the same time, just overwhelmingly made me feel like the worst stereotyped attorney and just hated having to walk into court on it and feel my reputation being destroyed. Settled a personal injury case for a guy and he was set to get about $5,000. He was in jail. 
I held the money for a couple months, and when he got out he came by to get the money without delay. The next day the cops came around, and asked if I knew him. I explained that I did. I was told he died that night of an overdose and the only thing found on him was my card, some drugs he had not yet used, and a needle. Eviction law. Basically every other case. Even the assholes. It's not rewarding to put people out on the curb. Ever. As a personal injury attorney, I've seen a few clients win the blue collar lotto, or getting more money than they reasonably know how to deal with. I do my best to educate them, but my job is to try and maximize their recovery, not teach them finance. I have definitely contributed to a few drug habits. I do juvenile work, criminal law and family law. I represented this client first, when he was a juvenile charged with disorderly conduct at school and fighting. Then when he became an adult it was for simple things like possession of marijuana. As he got older, it became easier and easier to figure out what part of his life hasn't gone as well as it could, and I tried to counsel him, and push him to better himself. He got his jed, he started going to nap, he started classes at a community college, and found a part time job. On the night of his 21st birthday, he was charged with a dwee. Of course I'll take care of that too. About 6 months later, we are due in court for trial, on a Monday, and he doesn't show up, which at this point in his life is highly unusual. As I'm trying to figure out where he is, the court starts going over arraignments first appearances, and then lo, and behold 3 people are up for murder charges. The prosecution starts to tell the judge what the fact circumstances of the case are, and mentions a few victims names. Apparently, my client was at a party when these 3 individuals decided to allegedly do a drive by shooting. My client suffered multiple gunshot wounds, and didn't make it to the hospital. So. By default, as you can't prosecute a dead person, the state has to take a dismissal. I guess technically a win. Either way, it was crushing to me as I thought he had really turned his life around. He had. Edit. Wow. This really blew up. Thanks for all the positive comments. And the bling. Also, since some people asked for clarification or were confused. 1. I truly believe he was on the right path forward. 2. Jed equals high school equivalency diploma 3. Nat equals narcotics anonymous 4. Dwi equals driving while impaired. In one of my first cases, after passing the bar exam, a young man retained me on a drunk driving charge. No one was hurt, but he totaled his car. During trial, the arresting police officer testified that my client was clearly drunk at the accident scene, and that my client was loudly blaming the accident on the ducking asshole, who stole his car, crashed it, and then fled before the cops arrived. However, according to two other witness statements tendered into evidence, it was my client's friend, the passenger, who was screaming about the asshole who stole the car, not my client, the driver. The cop must have confused the two men during his testimony. This discrepancy raised a reasonable doubt in the judge's mind, so she acquitted my client. At the time, the acquittal was somewhat unexpected for me. In my personal view, my client was clearly drunk and responsible for the accident, regardless of who was blaming the mystery as whole to the cops, but I was happy my young client got off, no one was hurt, and lessons were learned. And I was quite euphoric to have won my first criminal case. The regret? About a month after the acquittal, my young client called me at 3am from the police station saying it's me again. The police arrested me for drunk driving again. Can you help me? Not only did I answer no, I instantly regretted getting the earlier acquittal. My client apparently didn't learn any lessons. I got a spoiled brat of a teenager cleared of a shoplifting charge, when he absolutely had done it. His rich parents hired me to represent him. I did that to the best of my ability, and we went to trial and won. But I can't say I felt good about it. This kid needed to be taught some accountability for his actions and his parents just wanted to buy their way out of any trouble he got into. Had this happened to me twice. Got my client out on bail, only to thereafter have him up and killed. First time, he was in building supposedly selling. Got chased by the police and a struggle ensued where he was shot point blank in the head. Mother told me that it was my fault, that he was killed, and that I was working with the DA and the police. Second time, a young man no more than 16 gets released, while waiting trial on robbery. 
One of the conditions of release was that he maintain a curfew. That very night he breaks curfew goes over to somebody else's house and was killed in a drug related robbery. Mother blamed me and said that the devil was working through me, that we were all demons. Criminal defense is a hard business. Edit. Thank you everyone for the kind comments. Rest assured I don't take what they said personally. I've been around a long time and know that they were just acting out and that I just happened to be the closest person at the time and the only one who would actually listen to them. Edit 2. Lol. Yeah I can see how that reads. Like I might be talking about my mom. Going to leave it because of the lol. But for the record my mom thinks I'm a saint and can do no wrong. Edit 3. To the people saying that got what they deserved. Honestly it's easy to throw stones. But drugs, alcohol, mental illness are tough things. GD willing none of you will know what it's like. Edit 4. To those saying criminal lawyer bad etc. It would be easy if the world was just and the government never overreached. Who you going to go to when it's your turn to be ground under the wheel? Did a divorce where the husband, who I was representing, wanted to trade custody of his children for a set of bedroom furniture. The bedroom furniture was not even like a family heirloom. It was furniture that you could probably get at a rooms to go or something. Ugh, still makes me ill. That's why I got out of family law. Edit. I'd honestly like to thank all of you for your various points of view on this particular pain point in my career. For the record, yes, I did win that particular point, but it did not fill me with any joy. But, those who said that it was probably for the best, perhaps you're right. I won a summary judgment motion that my firm filed not expecting to win. We had a decent argument, but odds were way worse than a coin flip, and judges don't like granting summary judgment, because it's an extreme remedy. Client initially was thrilled, case is over, we tried to break the news gently. Nope. Three years later we are back in the same spot we were, before we won our motion. The other side appealed it up to the state supreme court and won, because the supreme court said the trial judge should have denied our motion. So, we are back at square one. North of dollar sign 100k in legal bills, with no resolution. Maybe it'll settle, maybe it will go to trial. I'll find out in the next 3 to 4 months. Eta, clarified my parenthetical. There was a case, that I saw, that involved a claim with fee shifting. Meaning that if the plaintiff won, their attorney's fees would get paid by the defendant. Defendant pushed an aggressive legal position at trial, that the judge agreed with, and won. Avoiding a few thousand in liability to the plaintiff and a few thousand in attorney's fees. So far so good. But then the plaintiff appeals all the way to the state's high court, requiring a ton of briefing and time. High court agrees with plaintiff, reverses and sends back to the trial court, which now enters judgment against the defendant for a few thousand in damages against the plaintiff and tens and tens of thousands of dollars in attorney's fees from the appeal. The defense lawyer probably regretted winning at first on that aggressive argument to the trial court. The one I particular hated happened at my first law job. This woman was a long term client of my boss. In the past 10 years or so, she has been caught driving under the influence 8 times, violated home incarceration countless times, been caught with controlled substances a few times, and stabbed 2 people on home incarceration. My boss at the time was the master of getting people off for DUIs, so she had only been convicted of a DUI third and always managed to stay on home incarceration with whatever releases she desired. I always regretted her cases, because that woman is truly a danger to the public. She's undoubtedly going to kill someone someday, but I'll be damned if she isn't the luckiest woman alive in getting away with DUIs. EU lawyer here, child sexual harassment case. I was the defendant of the mother and children their father was the abuser. He didn't grape them, he was touching them and making them play with him and stuff. I put all of my effort into this. We lost at the first trial, and then we won at the appeal court. The ducker got 6 years of jail time, served for, he is now out. Where is the regret? She is together with him today. Her children are 13 and 10, and they are fully aware of what has happened. I regret, because I had kinda seen it coming. When she started suspecting the harassment, she didn't do much. Still maintained her afternoon work shift while she had a choice to work mornings and left him alone with the children for hours.
She moved out of the house four months after her first suspicions from the harassment. During the trial, she often wept and needed psychological support because she felt responsible for destroying the family. I'm fully aware that a mother's victimization can happen. I cannot forgive that after almost seven years. Three years battling at cost and four years jail time. She is today with him. Makes me wanna vomit and burn every cent I earned from this case. Little late to the party, but I've got one I still think about a lot. Worked in criminal defense, represented a guy in a DUI. He had priors, so another convocation meant time, loss of license, problems. Long story short, he was pulled over by police, after they followed him leaving a bar. At trial I elicited admissions from the arresting officer, that during the two, five miles he followed him for, he did not observe a single moving violation, no speeding, erratic driving, driving over the lines, blowing stop signs, running red lights, didn't even stop suddenly at red lights, also got the dread officer to testify that the accused only spoke Spanish and they couldn't get an interpreter officer to the roadside to explain the field sobriety exercises which the officers documented the accused refused to perform. Jury came back in 15 minutes. Guy was extremely grateful and his lovely family was very gracious in thanking me and our office. Feel good about the whole thing. Couple months later I'm in county to meet with a client and I see him in one of the pods. Find out sometime after the trial he violently sexually assaulted his 8 year old stepdaughter. Think about that one a lot. Family law is a little different in that you never really win per se. You may get more favorable rulings or better terms, but unless the opposing party did something illegal or mind-bugglingly stupid it's never a decisive win really. Although I did have a case where my client fought really hard for the dog and then ended up turning him over to a shelter. Ducking as whole. The ex-wife received an anonymous tip and was able to get him back quickly. I convicted the father of murdering his wife and years later found out he lied when he confessed to cover for his teenage son who actually been the one who killed her. In the meanwhile the son committed suicide father was content to serve his time in prison.